Professional pilots, both commercial and military, do see UFOs, but the culture of silence within their ranks means the public almost never hears about it. There was a time, though, not long ago, when pilots who saw UFOs did talk to anyone who would listen. They were the fighter pilots and gunners of World War II, and they saw a lot of very strange things up there. World War II was the first great air war. Weapons of mass destruction were airborne, and technology was moving forward at an unprecedented rate. Axis and Allied powers were constantly on alert for the latest secret weapon. Germany had the V-1 rocket. England had advanced radar, an unblinking eye in the sky. And America was hard at work developing the ultimate weapon, the atomic bomb. And, says research scientist Richard Haynes, the belief that the other side could have developed just about anything may have concealed the largest mass UFO sighting in history. There were sailors on ships. There were GIs on the ground in artillery battalions. There were German soldiers on the other side of the line. People from all uh, sides of the war were involved and, and reported the same thing. Pilots described them as seemingly guided balls of light. Bob Leroy, a member of the 11th Airborne in New Guinea, remembers his first sighting of the mysterious craft. Suddenly I saw this ball about this size, that, that thing there about three feet in diameter, following this Japanese Betty bomber. And it started changing colors. I thought I'd seen a new secret weapon. I had to agree with the rest of the guys because that's what they all thought it was. They didn't know any better. And uh, nobody had ever heard of a UFO in 44. They were spotted around the world and became known as Foo Fighters, from the French word for fire. According to Haynes, who has investigated hundreds of newspaper and eyewitness accounts, the descriptions of the Foo Fighters are disturbingly alike. Pilots would report uh, glowing luminous balls of light that would come up from the ground, often orange or red, uh, anywhere from one foot to six feet in diameter, would accelerate up to their altitude and then level off very quickly and then stay beside the airplane. They would fly either singly or in pairs or in trio or four objects, oftentimes in rigid formation, which is important. And all of these flight dynamics point um, in one way or another to a fairly high intelligent level of guidance. Robert May was the tail gunner on a B-24 for the last two years of World War II. He vividly recalls a dangerous top secret mission to drop guns and ammunition behind German lines. But it wasn't the nature of the mission that has stayed with Robert for more than a half century. It's what he saw up there. I spied something out there. It was kind of bright. Didn't know if it was an aircraft or what it was. I'd say it was probably traveling at a fairly decent speed, maybe 200 miles an hour, 300 miles an hour, and it was coming toward it, but it was coming in a bright light. That's what made it so odd that we could not identify it, because we all knew exactly whatever, whatever uh, enemy aircraft was there, we knew what it was. It was very easy, because that's one of the things we learned real quick, like. The Allies thought it was the Nazis, the Nazis that it was the Allies. Then the fireball showed up in Japan, and here, from the November 1944 issue of the New York Times, is a very interesting case of a B-29 flying over Japan, uh, and the flight crew saw several Foo Fighters. Intelligence services for both Allied and Axis forces were hard at work trying to figure out where the Foo Fighters were coming from, says Mark Birdsall of UFO Magazine. British intelligence was interested as well. Uh, They've released reports. They tried very, very hard to put a category on it and to classify it as a night fighter or an enemy bomber or something other than that. But uh, it proved useless. They couldn't do it. To this day, no one has figured out what they were or who made them. I don't think there's any way that in 1943 or 44 or 45, terrestrial technology was advanced enough to uh, produce the kind of flight dynamics the containment of energy, the luminous output for as long as we're talking about here. And Foo Fighters did not go away when World War II ended. Military pilots reported seeing them during the Korean War. 
And were it not for the code of silence of modern day pilots, there might be continuing reports today. Take the case of this former Soviet fighter pilot who claims to have had an encounter with a Foo Fighter. I gained the altitude of 3,900 meters and I saw a um, ball in front of me about 20 degrees to the right. In 1991, Maxim Tribakov was at the top of his class, fast on his way to becoming Russia's top gun. Then, on a training flight, Tribakov said that he was chased by an aggressive UFO that sent his plane into a nosedive. My altitude began to drop rapidly. I had to pull the plane out of the nosedive. At the altitude of 1,000 meters, I finally cleared the residential area, and I ejected. Four seconds later, the plane exploded. Cherbakov's admission that he had seen a fireball under intelligent control cost him his career. For pilots around the world, this only strengthened their resolve to keep the code of silence. As a result, we are no closer to solving the Foo Fighter mystery than we were 50 years ago. There's a possibility that Foo Fighters uh, could have been, or, could, or still are, uh, guided and controlled, created, produced by an advanced intelligence not of this planet. But that is a difficult um, thing to prove, clearly. I'd like to simply let the evidence speak for itself and to continue to do research on the subject and then simply let the chips fall where they may. It's important to remember that in the heyday of the Foo Fighter, the term flying saucer hadn't been invented yet. So pilots didn't have a standard by which to measure their encounters. In fact, the government panel that studied Foo Fighters in 1953 said, quote, if the term flying saucer had been popular in 1943, these objects would have been so labeled, unquote. <laughs>